Agentic. Agents. Agentic. 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 The agentic. Agentic AI. Agentic. This buzzword is everywhere and it's making its way into your home. I hear people talk about using agentic AI in homes, but they talk about it as though this is something theoretical or it's gonna happen in the near future. Nah fam, nah. Don't be bamboozled, it's here now. They just can't charge you for it yet. But I'm gonna show you how to beat them to it. So very few people really understand what agentic is. You typically hear it used together with or interchangeably with AI, and even people at Amazon don't really know what it is. Shh, don't tell them that though. But understanding the difference between the vanilla AI and agentic AI will help you see if this is something that you want to introduce into your smart home setup. First of all, a lot of people have been saying everything is an agent, referring to almost anything more than just a single LLM call. Um, one of the things we tried to do in the blog post is really kind of separate this out of like, hey, there's workflows, which is where you have a few LLM calls chained together. And really what we think an agent is, is where you're letting the LLM decide sort of how many times to run. You're having it continuing to loop until it's found a resolution. Uh, and that could be you know, talking to a customer for customer support, that could be iterating on code changes, mm -hmm. but something where like you don't know how many steps it's gonna take to complete, that's really sort of what we consider an agent. Now, let's ask AI what agentic is. In AI, agentic behavior refers to AI systems that can plan, make decisions, and act autonomously rather than just responding passively to inputs. Cool. Let's double click on that. The key part I wanna highlight is act autonomously. Currently, when we work with AI, we give it a prompt and it acts in accordance with the context it has. In sophisticated workflows, AI may even call one or more other AI systems. These are what we refer to as AI workflows. And I would go as far as to say that every agentic system is secretly an AI workflow, but a rather sophisticated one. But it's not the other way around. What separates AI agents from regular AI workflows, I would say is the feedback loop. When using an AI agent, there's a feedback loop that lets the AI consistently adjust for its actions. So that way it can reach a desired goal. For, for those of you familiar with computer science, we would kind of label this as non-deterministic. Now, if done right, we know the AI will reach the goal. We just don't know how many steps it would take to get there. It's, it's very indeterminate. So I think a workflow prompt looks like you have one prompt, uh, you take the output of it, you feed it into prompt B, take the output of that, feed it to prompt C, and then you're done. Kind of there's this straight line, fixed number of steps. You know exactly what's gonna happen. And maybe you have some extra code that sort of checks the intermediate results of these and make sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. In contrast, an agent prompt will be sort of much more open-ended and usually give the model tools or multiple things to check and say, hey, here's the question and you can do web searches or you can edit these code files or run code and keep doing this until you have the answer. It's kind of like, um... It's kind of like telling a person to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then giving them all of the ingredients. Will they open the bread first or will they open the condiments? Will they put the peanut butter on the bread first or, or even more psychotic, will they spread both the jelly and the peanut butter on the same bread and then cover it with the other naked bread? Like we don't know. We don't know how many steps the person's gonna take to get there or even how long it's gonna take. We only trust that at the end there will be a sandwich. The same thing happens with AI agents. We know that they're gonna complete the job. It's just unclear what they will do. And in the moment, it's unclear about the behavior that they'll take. It's just based off of the feedback that they get. No, why would I wanna use AI in my home? Code needs to be highly deterministic because that's what makes it reasonable and testable and easy to understand. Why would I wanna introduce something that is flaky and un... No, it doesn't make any sense. If I wanna turn my lights on and off, I wanna write code that does it right. I don't wanna have to worry about AI getting it wrong or hallucinating. You guys are doing way too much. Stop it. I know some of you think that. I read your comments. <laughs> but don't worry, I don't feel mad. I don't feel any type of way about it. Let me tell you a story. Back in the early 90s, my dad had a shed in the backyard where he would fix electronics. Do you remember those big back TVs? Yeah, so his friends and friends of friends would bring their TVs and VCRs for him to fix. Now this went so well that he actually opened up 
his first legit shop. True entrepreneur, like true, true entrepreneur. For years, my brother and I would go to his, my dad's shop and sit in the back with mountains and mountains of TVs stacked in the back and all these gadgets. It was a very magical place for me. And I would even talk to customers and help them check in and out their equipment. But as many of you probably know, time only moves forward and tech only gets smaller and more efficient. As tech advanced, those big booty back TVs became slender plasma TVs and flat screen TVs. And more people with computers started showing up and not just for hardware problems, but for software issues too. And sure, my dad can fix hardware issues, but software was beyond him. Technology finally reached a point where it was much cheaper and more convenient for people to just buy a new product rather than to have a technician fix it. This did not happen overnight though. This change was slow and gradual and that decay finally forced the business to close. No one needed VCRs to be fixed. No one wanted big booty TVs. The world had moved forward while the business did not. But don't worry, my dad's fine, don't worry about it. The point of my story is this. AI is here and will continue to change the landscape of technology, adapt or die. Don't misunderstand me now. I'm not saying that you need to go and go out of your way to shove AI into your homes and, and have it everywhere. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that you need to understand it. You need to understand how it works. You need to understand how it shapes the things around you. What I'm saying is that you need to explore. Sure, I agree that it doesn't make sense at the moment for AI to control your lights, but one day it will make sense and it will only make sense if you explore it because I would rather we find that solution rather than big business because someone's gonna find it and you're gonna be upset if it's not you, I'm just saying. So what's currently the best way to use AI in your home? I personally see three major advantages AI have over the traditional deterministic process. The first one, first advantage is clarity. AI can take data and provide clarity and insight with it. This is something that's extremely difficult to do with traditional code. And this is especially true when the data is unstructured. Now, what I mean by unstructured data is that typically data, especially with like tech and, and working with software, it's, it's usually kept in like a database or some kind of table, something structured or JSON or, or whatever the case is. Like you kind of get the idea. Unstructured data, on the other hand, is usually freeformed and requires like a human element to make sense of that data and to draw correlations. AI can do that quite well. The second major advantage AI has is that it lets you take action based on unstructured data. Let me give you an exaggerated real world example. If I say to my smart home, build me a workout plan and that workout plan should focus on let's say my back and my biceps ai will generate that for me no problem it can even look at my previous workouts and tailor its new output based off of my previous performances if i were to write that in traditional code i, I don't even know where i would begin that would be so intense to replicate mm, yeah that's kind of terrifying but ai makes this easy and by the way if you want to see how i created an automation that does just that you can check the link in the description uh, there's a video on that. The last example is dynamics or randomness, right? AI can introduce a sense of randomness that makes automations or the experience of it feel more human. I, I know it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. In traditional automations where you want to create responses that feel natural or interesting, we typically do this by generating canned responses. And then if we want to get really fancy, we add some dynamic elements in those canned responses. And then we would have our automations randomly choose one of those appropriately canned responses. So that's the way of the old and how we would generate like some nuance or some lightness into our automations. With AI, we don't need to do that anymore. It can create dynamic responses with far less code and way easier effort. For example, I have an automation that fires every single night telling me about the state of my dishwasher and any upcoming appointments. But with AI, it just feels nicer. It feels human. Like I can have it explain all of that in a very, normal way I it just it's just it just feels nice guys it just feels nice I mean like you can disagree with me that's fine I think you're wrong though but you know it's fine <laughs> if you want to create something like that for yourself I created this video here that shows you step by step how I actually did it check the link in the description for that too okay so those were AI workflows but what about AI agents where do they fit in the smart home ecosystem now I'm gonna be very honest with you and very transparent you can do it, you can build an agentic smart home, but it must be extremely intentional and 
in small doses. Like you can do it. It just, well, let me just show you an example and perhaps you can see what I mean. Here's a simple representation of K, my smart home AI agent. First, there's some kind of trigger. This can come externally or it can come from Home Assistant and it will eventually make it into Node Red where it will first ask Home Assistant Assist to try to take care of it. So it's going to ask Home Assistant Assist to do something with it. And if it fails, then Node Red is going to try to send it to K. Now, initially, when my smart home turns on this auto initialization that fires and what it does is that it loads a bunch of documents within itself. For me, this comes uh, from Obsidian. Now, this initial data sets the context for how my smart home should behave. K is then given the input from Node-RED and then it chooses for itself what business logic or tools it can call. Right, that's down here. Remember the peanut butter and jelly analogy? These tools here are the ingredients. So through trial and error, my particular design interaction is kept as shallow as possible to reduce the error rate. So by keeping the interaction shallow, I simply mean that to solve any problem, the AI only needs to call an AI service once or twice at most to solve a problem. If I use the peanut butter and jelly analogy again, this is similar to giving a person that's making the sandwich uh, one of those jars that have both the peanut butter and jelly inside. Same number of steps per se, or it's the same steps, but just less effort and work. Yeah, so you remember that simplistic view from just a little while ago? Well, this is what that looks like in reality. I'm gonna run a command and uh, Hopefully this should make my point. One second, let's see if this works. Mm. In one minute, turn off all the lights in the office. Okay, you couldn't hear it. It said turning off all the lights in the office shortly. Yep. All right, so let's come back over here. Essentially what happened is that this picked up my automation. It heard my voice and then it sent it over here to the choreography. Let's see if I can zoom in. It went here to the choreography. Its job is to essentially figure out what to call. And when we look here in the system, I have all of this data. These are all of the tools, the commands, the ingredients that it can choose from. Once it chooses it, I want it to choose this run future command and I'm sure it did. So then if it does, it goes all the way down here and it chooses this one and it runs it and then it stores it here. And you can see here, look at that. It fired off, nice. And here's the thing, it comes here, it fires off. And when it does, what makes this an agent is that it circles back to the top. It goes back to the choreography and after a minute says, hey, I have this command, can you run it for me? And then the AI will then choose again whether or not or what to do. The AI agent is autonomous and gets to choose how it goes to do the command. And sometimes it gets it right and sometimes it gets it wrong. The more commands you have, the more chances or the more likely it is gonna get things wrong. But again, it's this is what the reality is currently for AI agents, but all is not lost. One second. Now, is this for everyone? No, I, I don't think so. Do I recommend that you at least try it out? And I would say damn straight, you need to try this out. While exploring this, you're gonna find what works best for you. And eventually you're gonna learn how far is too far. And this way, big tech can't set you up for the okie doke either because you already know how this works. You understand its place in your home and whether or not you even want it in your home, but at least you understand it. I gave you a ton of resources. And as you saw, I have a lot of earlier videos where I was kind of teeing you up for all of this because it, I've explored a lot of this stuff in the past. And this is just an accumulation of all of these past experiments kind of put together in a way that makes sense. You just need to rummage through all of the content and kind of put these concepts together yourself. But I'm positive you can do it because man, this is what we do here on this channel. But if you're interested in really digging deep and diving and learning why I did the choreography pattern for my AI agent or what is a choreography pattern? How do you debug the system and, and have transparency throughout to know what's going on? What are other automations you can create? What shouldn't you create? All of those questions and more, you can, I, I go through and you can check the link in the description for the automation trilogy. In it, uh, I, I go over not only just how I do all of this stuff, but I provide the why, and I also provide shortcuts so you don't have to build all of this stuff for yourself from scratch. Now, 
if you feel that it's not for you, that's okay. This three-part series is not for everyone and, and, and that's fine. You can still join the Tech Enthusiast community where I have a bunch of extra content in there that dives into these concepts and I still plan on exploring these concepts here on this channel too. So last year I created an agentic vacuum robot automation and at the time I didn't really know that that's what it was called. I only knew that it was cool and it was gonna change the world. You can go watch that next.